Welcome back to Studio K, everyone. We're so glad to have you here. And I'm sitting here with Jaden James. How are you feeling, Jaden? I'm feeling great. This was awesome. so fun. Oh, yeah, it was fun for me, too. It was fun for everyone in the booth. We had a round of applause after the performance. <laughs> yeah. Uh, first of all, can you introduce yourself and then introduce your bandmates and all their instruments, please? Oh, my goodness. It's quite the group. There's yeah. seven pieces. Can we just do today. first names? First names is fine. All right. Totally so fine. I'm Jaden James. And this is NJ. And he sang back up today. And then I had Frank on keys, and I had Seth on lead guitar, and I had Scott on bass, and Tark on the drums, and then I also had Alex on the trumpet. Fantastic. It's quite the group that you assembled. Can you tell me how you found these fantastic instrumentalists and how you brought them together for your group? Well, I'm deeply in the Minneapolis music scene, Yeah. right? Um, it's my community it's my home and so i just poached everybody else's bands i see so That's you went around you <laughs> <laughs> i honestly don't know besides nj besides you how i got introduced to everybody it's yeah. like i really wanted an incredible lineup and i mean it is that thing where it's like you see them in an incredible group and you go hey do you have time for another gig right and they either say yes or they say no yeah and they said yes and we met at the basilica block party in 2017 we were both playing in the Star Tribune stage, and it was like looking in a mirror. It was yeah. like a soulmate. I was like, oh, she blacks out on stage, too. Yeah, this it was great. that. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Yeah, it was. Uh, I saw him, and I went, oh, my God, I have to follow that. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. yeah. Some of the best relationships start that way, though, I think. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I know a lot of these guys in the group from different from different groups, and they've been, we were talking about this before, everyone's had their own in-studio here, but with a different, the different group. Mm -hmm. So it's awesome. Uh, I know they're in a lot of pictures on the wall. Yeah. 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 For, for our listeners who, who can't see the studio, we have probably around a thousand uh, Polaroid pictures in here from previous groups who've come through. But yeah. All right. Well, let's get into the nitty gritty. Um, you just released an album. Is that I right? Did. Yes. I released an album Loving a you week so ago today. A week ago. Mm -hmm. It's fresh. It's new. How has the reception been so far? It's been great. Yeah. It's been amazing. You know, it's kind of this thing of like you put something out into the world, you give birth to it, you work. I mean, I worked on that album for four and a half years. Wow. Granted, we did have like a pandemic that mm. maybe interrupted most of that time. But once you put it out, you, you put all this love and you get a little bit crazy. You know, I was telling you earlier, I was like, I was kind of in studio jail, like I was in, right. on an island. And then it's really not up to you what happens with it after. Right. And so to have people reach out and say, you know, these are my favorite songs. I love this part. Um, to hear it on the radio, to be able to do things like this, to yeah. be able to have the release show at the Dakota. It's like, it's incredible. Mm -hmm. And I've got a really busy rest of the month, too. And I'm just so proud of this album um, that it honestly wouldn't matter what anybody else thought yeah. about it. That was the whole goal was I was doing it for me. I was doing it for you know, little baby Jaden who wanted to do at least one great album yeah. before she got old and moved into a cabin. Totally. And I feel like you kind of get into that in the song, Do It For Her. Is that, are you talking to yourself? That's exactly right. You That's got awesome. it. You nailed it. Yep. Yeah. And there's, there's something more in that song too. I feel like the first verse, you're kind of talking to yourself, but then you move you beyond yourself. You listen to yourself. it. <laughs> of course I listen to it. It's a fantastic album. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> but yeah, so who, who are you talking to in the second verse of that song? I think um, all of the women that did so much work that I could be here, mm. right? So... Um, there's just, <laughs> I mean, right now I'm thinking about Tina Turner, right? Hmm. Um, she passed away, and I think about all the incredible work that she did to be this vibrant, strong woman on stage. I mean, when What's Love Got to Do With It came out, she was 44. Wow. Right? So yeah, I, didn't I just, I think it's the women that broke barriers, right? The, the silly thing is, is like, I don't really think I'm doing anything that's like crazy, but people are still like, oh, you're this big lady out here on stage, like kicking butt. And it's kind of like, we've been doing it, mm -hmm. you know? So um, I think it was important to say and to keep saying that, like, I'm not the first and that's totally fine. And we just have to get, I, I would like for us to be acquainted with women in power and that it's yeah. fine and it doesn't bother people, you know? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Well, give me some, some great female vocalists that have come before you that, that you really take after as a performer. 
So inspiration definitely comes from Alanis, Aretha, Amy Winehouse, uh, Etta James, for sure. I mean, taking the last name James. Um, Jaden is my first legal name. My James mother is didn't. not your last name, though? No, it's oh, not. I didn't know that. Um, I thought I'd always have to get married to change my last name, but it just turns out I had to have a band. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Uh, who else? Whitney. Well, it's always hard for me to be like, I'm inspired by Whitney because it's Whitney. But Whitney is my favorite of all oh, time. Okay. Um, but I think, like, growing up, too, like, Christina was huge. Um, I love that Celine. these are all just first names and we know who they are. Exactly. Like, Selena. Yeah. <laughs> like, these right. were these are the things I love. This is the music that I listen to are yeah. those singers. Yeah. Totally. All right. Before we stray too far from the album, um, I want to talk about the songs that you just played. Um, they were all from the album, except for that overture. Uh, that's Is that something that I you wanted, just do live? I wanted to get it recorded. Yeah. Uh, we yeah, only well, do that live. And I just think it's so brilliant, Frank. Mark Lewitz wrote that, the keyboard player. Yeah. Um, so I pretty much just one day was like, hey, Frank, I want an overture. Yeah. I, I want walk-on music. And he was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and then, so where did the, the, the announcing that Alex does, when did, wh- how did that come about? I think it just probably happened in the rehearsal room okay. where I maybe first started saying goofy stuff. Um, it might have been his idea, but I knew that He's I He's right knew, here. Was, was it your here. idea? Was it your idea? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, no, we had done that wedding together, and you had done some emceeing. Yeah. And so then I knew oh. that he could do it, and I knew that nobody else in the group would want to do it. And he's yeah. got a great radio voice. Like, he's got a great voice, so. If you were a student, we would have you on. We would invite you to be a DJ. Go back but, to school, Alex. Yeah. I think he's graduated. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> we missed out. Well. That's cool. All right, well, let, let's go through the other song. So um, you've got This Way. That was your second song, correct? Yes. Uh, that we had Good to You and then Here in Your Love. Mm-hmm. And then Here in Your Love, you released that as a single before I did. the album came out. Yep, too. I did. Um, on my birthday. Oh, really? Like a couple of days before my birthday in March, we released it. Cool. Yeah, I really wanted to do it for Valentine's Day, but I got busy. I, I totally understand. <laughs> yeah. But in any case, yeah, so... The entire album, Loving You So Hard, Mm -hmm. uh, one, it's me loving me and me wanting to do, you know, an album that I love with songs that I love. But the other thing about the Jaden James story, it's not the only thing about Jaden James. And I'm talking about her like that because she is a character to me. Okay. So it's like I get to wear her on stage, which feels really it's like being Superwoman. So every day Jaden is different than Jaden James. Oh, totally. She's very butchy. She has a pit bull. Oh, okay. So that's like that. That's the line, your mommy and your daddy, mm. because oh. I think a lot of women are complex. Um, but this is definitely like drag for me, which mm. I love. That's great. Um, in any case, so I survived domestic violence. Mm. I got out. I got a band. I ended that band. I wanted to go solo. And I still really had not told the whole story. And I think that it's still really important for us to tell the stories that so many people go through. So You've Got This Way began as somebody else had a way of keeping me under their power, Mm -hmm. right? But then as I healed, it was like, that was my stuff that I, and I'm not, you know, (laughs) victim blaming, but I'm saying like, I had this way of like staying around because it's kind of what I was used to. It's kind of what I thought I deserved. Yeah. Um, Good to you. I, I just really wanted to put this song on the radio because I think it's uh, a different thing for the Jaden James. It's a happy. It's summer. It's. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in a lot of my tunes you get desperation, you get sadness, you get like this catharsis. Um, but I wanted to branch out, and good to you is that. Yeah. And then of course, here in your love was the romantic one because even though yes, I've been through hardship and toxic relationships, I have healed and I have loved. And I think that a lot of people could think that because you survived domestic abuse or you had a traumatic event that like that's it, that you don't have complicated lives or that you don't or complex. And I say that and like that there isn't beauty and love because I've also experienced that that doesn't mark my entire life. Hmm. Um, So it's really important to me because I know that we have so many survivors that it's like you're not just a survivor. You know, you're yeah. many things. Yeah, showing that complexity. That's well. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. I, I really appreciate it. 
Um, and yeah, and I feel like just like sonically in this in this album, you uh, show your versatility more so than you have before in terms Thank of you. your recorded music. Like I went back and listened to your stuff from like 2018, 2019. When we dug deep. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> and like you, you have like more ballads on this on this record, and yeah. I, it's it's just really beautiful. Thank I think you. so. Great versatile record, um, worthwhile listen. I Thank think, you. Those out there. Uh, do you have a favorite song on the record? It depends on the day, yeah. right? It's like what I'm feeling. Um, the two that kind of jump out to me that we, one, when we do on stage, like Loving You So Hard mm-hmm. is so fun to do on stage. People just lose their minds. And it's the yeah. one song that like people sing back to me, like when they oh. see me on the street or like, Loving You So Hard, Loving You So Hard. Like it's just, people are like get rowdy about that one which so do I Um, and I didn't do it on the radio today because I didn't want to give it away because there's places you could come see me do it right what and tell me about one of those places that's maybe the Dakota on June 3rd June 3rd is tomorrow 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 night at what time 6 30 is the early show oh you get a double header I got it my first double header Mm -hmm. I'm not nervous about it at all it's gonna be (laughs) totally fine and then nine o'clock is the second show great so still early you guys yeah, it's still early. It's not the late show. It's the second early show. Yeah, and there's uh, there's there's two options for you too. You can <laughs> you can got to make it work some way. Well, and it's supposed to be the, like the Prince weekend downtown. Oh. So if you're downtown, it's gonna be fun. Yeah. You're gonna have a fun time downtown. Yeah, you, you got could. a Princey vibe to you too. I think I definitely got some Prince influence in there. I mean, I think of NJ as like the born again prince of Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah, and NJ will be accompanying you at the at the Dakota. Yeah, correct? so that's for, the other thing is that yeah. NJ did all. The background vocals on this album. Yeah. Yep. It was a great honor and pleasure because, like I said, since Jaden and I met each other and looked at each other and sort of become became obsessed with each other as mm-hmm. peers in the music scene, mm-hmm. I don't know where the threshold changed over, but you've truly, I think just over time, you've become such a good friend to me, like in my personal life too. And so we had that trust and her album was getting close to being done. And it was interesting because everything was so produced out and Jaden, who loves soul music amongst other things, she wanted background vocals and sort of had this blockage with it, right? I was because scared. As an independent artist, there's no rule book to making this big album, right? And so right. there are different processes to where, you know, you, you don't know where you're going to get caught up in. And, and mm-hmm. that's something I love to do. I've, I've engineered my vocals for years. And mm-hmm. if there was something I wanted Jaden to come away with after ha- doing Loving You So Hard. It's giving her the power also to mm. be able to record herself and hear these things. So and I asked did. her if I could if I could hold a few tracks and yeah. she liked them. So she let me hold the whole album. You and literally wow. said, why aren't I doing this? <laughs> <laughs> In so many words, right? And I went, oh. Oh, OK. <laughs> yeah. So, it, it, yeah, I just I appreciate the opportunity and I'll be opening for her also at the Dakota yeah. tomorrow, too. So yeah, I, it's going to be incredible. We're keeping it in the family. Mm-hmm. So, so the record was was finished. All the songs were finished, and then you came and you were like, "These need background vocals." And pretty, you... pretty much. Okay. I mean, I still was working on lead vocals, which I also needed help. I, I wanted his support. Um, it's scary. Yeah. Um, being an independent artist with you know, it's on me. I'm paying for it, mm-hmm. right? It's out of this teeny tiny little pocket that a single woman has. Uh, um, in this economy, <laughs> you know? Right. And so basically it was like, I didn't know who in town could do it. And like, he was right. It was like, I had this blockage. And then we were just talking as friends. I was literally thinking the other day, I'm like, Nick's one of my best friends. <laughs> so, um, and, and that's why I'm so excited to share this show. But also... I just like the blockage was like not seeing what literally was right in front of me, right. you know, mm-hmm. and then it was like clicked and I had this confidence to record and do leads. And I just knew that you had my back along with Holly Hansen, who was the engineer. I mean, these two just were like, yep, we're going to like build a booth. I, I recorded all the vocals in a closet. Oh. And because yeah. I wanted to take my time, studio time is expensive. Yes. Like, and we wanted to really just like showcase to you, like, hey, 
you can get the quality recording you you right. need without having to like go into debt. Right. You know, for yeah, all these, I wanted like, to still enjoy my life. Studios. I'm still in debt, but it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like it'd be hard to be patient. I mean, you were sitting on these songs for for a very long time. People and... always say, Jaden, you're so patient. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you, you you have to be to for four years. That's <laughs> I'm. It's a joke, Eli. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, I, <laughs> but I mean, there wasn't a choice. Yeah. There was there was right, okay. there was a couple of things. One, it's self funded. Yeah. Two, pandemic. I had to survive. I wanted to like my life. Sure, there were times when I could have gone full out broke and done things in two years. Mm. It was really really important to me. So when you're in music or when you're taking on any artistic venture. Like, you don't know if you're going to make it, if you're going to whatever. So for my, the way that I look at it is like, I need to enjoy it. Yeah. There's nobody else. There's no pressure from anybody else. If I don't like it, if I don't, if I'm not having fun, it stops there. Right. So I took my time because I wanted to love it. And um, so it, it felt not like patience. It okay. felt just like the journey, I yeah, guess. Yeah, sure. Yeah. That's great. That's, that's, that, that's great advice for, for any musician out there, anyone who's recording. I think that's a great mindset to have while recording. It took a lot of years to get that way. Yeah. You know? It'll test you. Yeah. Oh. If you really, really love this music mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. it'll totally. test you right. for sure if you really just embrace and, that journey of it. Yeah, and just asking yourself, like, why am I here and what do I want? Mm -hmm. And, like, the what do I want, it's like, okay, I knew I didn't want to be Beyonce, but I also didn't have the resources to do that right? right so it's like living within that reality and still being able to have dreams and still being able to enjoy our lives and I think some place like Radio K brings in all these independent artists and that's part of it right that's a dream like yeah. I'm gonna be a little old lady someday I'm gonna say I was on the radio and that's huge that's a that's a select you know, amount of humans. Yeah, unique little experience we mm -hmm. got going on here. Absolutely. Totally. All right, we're getting to time, so I just have a few more questions that I sure. that I want to get in. Uh, first of all, so you have the show at the Dakota, but are there more shows this summer that you want to talk about? Yeah, we've got some great shows. So after the Dakota, I'm leaving town. I'm getting out of here, uh -huh. Eli. Okay. I'm going to Yuba um, cool. to Driftless Music Gardens to headline Bonfire. Um, with People oh. Brothers, Michael Franti is going to be there. Um, what's his song? Eric, do you know, uh, Eric. They've got too many band members. Um, you know, he's got an incredible song. And then a few songs, but there's like one hit one. Okay. Yeah, right? It's like, it's like no pressure, you're on the radio. <laughs> in any case, after we do Bonfire, then I'm in Eagle, Wisconsin for Feed Your Head. We're headlining that as well. And that's a funk uh, festival, which I'm really excited for. And then July is a little bit quiet. We haven't announced the one thing that I'm doing in July because to be honest, to be sitting on a record for four and a half years, being, you know, so patient about it and then pushing it out, doing these big shows, I'm going to need a little bit of a break. Yeah. But the big, big thing that I'm really, really excited about is happening in August. It's a Thursday. I think it's the 17th. Mm. But I'm opening for St. Paul and the Broken Bones. Wow, cool. So that's going to be very cool. It's my first time. Not that we haven't, like, shared stages uh, with, you know, doing Basilica Black Party. There's, like, big names around. But mm -hmm. this is, like, an official opening okay. act. So I'm really excited for that. And then I've got a couple of things that I also can't announce yet. Cool. Um, but, yeah, trying to be busy. Yeah. Staying busy. Lots of options for the people. If you can't make it to the Dakota, there's... There's lots more. No, options. that's the only option. Oh, that's the only option. Sorry. It's the fact. <laughs> it's a fact. It's, it's a fact. That's just it. <laughs> totally. <laughs> <laughs> album release show too. There's this there's this right. like mm -hmm. a special energy at an album release show, I think. That's right. But yeah. All right. Well, I have some fun questions for you now. Uh -oh. Um I, I saw that there's a so your your fan base, your fan your your people, the Jade Babes. You really did your yeah, homework. The, so <laughs> it's a Facebook group. How did that come about? <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> Well, my stepdad, the man who raised me, mm -hmm. he's called me Jade Babe. Oh, okay. Forever. And so I'm just going to, you talked about nitty gritty. Mm -hmm. Get in there. So I did an article last summer mm -hmm. and 
the line in it was that my mom raised me and my sisters by herself. And it hurt his feelings, hmm. which hurt my feelings because that's not what I want to hear when I have press, right? I just want to hear, great job. Yeah. <laughs> but so I thought, okay, how can I make this up to him? Because he really is the man that showed me that there are trustworthy men. He's was the rock in my life. He was the rock for everyone in my family. Mm. Um, we had a lot of stuff that went on growing up too. And so I thought I was thinking about doing a fan base for a while, just because like if you're in and you like what Jaden's doing, you're kind of nuts and <laughs> you're, you're in, you're dedicated. Yeah. And so I decided I would make a Facebook group and I was like, I'm going to call it the Jade Babes. Mm. So we could all, and it was like very emotional. Like when I named, it's goofy, but when I named the Facebook group Jade Babes, I cried because oh. it felt like sharing something that was so sacred between me and him. But it's actually made, it's actually like his page. Like okay. he's the one that <laughs> posts in there. He's the one that's commenting. Um, but yeah, so I just really wanted to give him his due because he deserved it. That's great. Yeah, well, that was that was a, that was an awesome. I was honestly not expecting that. I thought it was just some <laughs> some weird thing that came about from from a fan or something. But that's that's sentimental. That's really nice. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, all right. And then now this is a question that I ask every every group that comes in here. Um, I want you to build a dream bill for me. You get to be on it. You get three other groups. Wow. On, on that the bill, spot. dead or alive, on the spot. You guys can talk about it. You can collaborate if you want. And Jay, you can be there too. So, so five groups total. <laughs> okay, yeah, five perfect. Groups total. Love that. That makes me very happy. Give me three more, dead or alive. James Brown, Whitney Houston, and Jay, Jaden James. We got one more. Tony Braxton. Ooh, good one. <laughs> 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 Solid. Great way to end it. All right. Well, well, thank you so much again for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Great performance. Uh, it was great talking to you. Thank you so much. This was great. Yeah. Awesome. All right. We're going to send it back to the booth, uh, playing some more local music until 5 p.m. today. This is Radio K, Real College Radio. <laughs>